Oh, well, everybody, welcome back to the channel. My buddy Andy here and I, <laughs> we're at his place, and uh, we had some struggles getting this oil filter off. And I'll tell you why. You want to hold that right there, Andy? Here, let's get some get some decent light on it. Uh, trying to, oh, here's that flashlight. All right. There we go. So I want you to look at this oil filter. It is just mangled and Andy has tried everything. And uh, I told him, I think I have a solution. So I brought my tools out here. And as you can see real close, we wrapped electrical tape around it because we needed to increase the friction on it. Now, the one of the biggest reasons that it did not come off is because guess what color this filter is? It is gray, the same color as the engine. When, and this is this is his 50 hour service. We're changing oil at 50 hours, just like you're supposed to. And one of the biggest problems was it was factory installed, which means they painted right over the oil filter. So we, we broke it up. We broke the bead of paint with a little uh, pick tool that I have. In fact, here, I'll show it to you. Here we go. Can you hold that too? You got yeah. how, many, how many hands you got? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I'm holding the flashlight with the wand in there. So we use a pick tool to go all the way around the edge of the oil filter and we broke that paint up. And then because the oil filter was kind of already mangled a little bit, we wrapped some electrical tape around it and we're able to increase the diameter. And then finally we're able to pound this this uh, filter wrench on it and it came loose. So how are you feeling now, Andy? <laughs> I was pretty defeated a couple minutes ago, but <laughs> feeling much better. <laughs> much better. So we got it. So um, sometimes, sometimes the simplest things, the absolute simplest things can be an absolute pain in the hind end. So Andy kind of found that out. And I was, I was free today. I was like, yeah, I'll help you. So I was able to come here and we found a solution, a little bit of teamwork. And uh, hey, Andy, how about an update on this cab of yours? You got the original cab. We did a video on this. I'll put a link for that. What are you thinking so far? You know, it's uh, it's been wonderful. It's been nice to uh, keep the wind off you, keep that blowing snow off you, and get, prevent that from going down your back. So yeah, yeah, no, it's been wonderful. It's been real nice. Because you've got a front snow blower. We've had some crazy cold weather. I mean. What was it? Oh, we God. had some just wind chills that were 30 below, 30 below yeah. plus snow. So you were out there blowing snow, <laughs> but you're protected from I the was, elements this was, time. It was really nice. <laughs> Look at the smile yeah. right there. Yeah, I'm not having to worry about <laughs> goggles and everything else. And... Yeah, you don't have to put a helmet on, right? right. Yeah. So anyway, uh, that's the original tractor cab. Uh, we picked that up from a guy uh, about an hour away from us one day. And, you know. All right, guys, we are here. Andy and I have made it to Preston's house. And we have been disassembling this. Tell, tell us what, what we were doing, Preston. What, what's going on here? We were taking off the original tractor cab. The original tractor cab came off of your... BX2380, switched which, over. Which Andy has a 2380. <laughs> this so happens. And you know what blowing snow <laughs> with, is like without a cab in Minnesota, it's right? It's a little cold. And Everybody has to go winter without something. <laughs> no, I did the first winter also. Yep. So, so this is the original tractor cab. We've kind of disassembled it to the point where we can fit it in the back of Andy's truck. And we have the doors over here. And, and behind us is some of the vinyl covering and the, the glass windshield. And Preston, you no longer want your original tractor cab, do you? No, nope, no longer. <laughs> because you're not a crazy person. <laughs> We, we want to, let's let's be out front. You're not a crazy, insane person that wants to tough out the elements. You have something different. I have switched <laughs> over to the hard factory cab, the Curtis cab that is made for Kubota. Well, should we go take a look at what sure. you got on? Let's All go. right, let's go over there. As you guys know, I have the BX23S with the Curtis cab, the premium deluxe cab. So it's available for the 2380 and it's available for the 23S. There are a couple different variations. Because I have a back coat, my back panel pops out and the roof pops up so I can get the back panel off. Preston's doesn't, but it still has all of the same features. And you've used it now one time, right? One time. One, one time. time. And what do you think so far? It's great. It's a little, it's warmer, right? Also coming out of the heated garage, which also yeah. helps. 
Um, but now it just stays warm from start to finish. It stays warm from start to finish and, and it's hard sided, hard glass all the way around. All the way around. A little bit of an upgrade from the original tractor cab. A little bit of an upgrade, yeah. front and back wipers, um, and front and back, uh, lights now installed. So I'm wondering how many years it will be before this guy <laughs> up, upgrades to the, the Curtis cab. I, I don't know. <laughs> it might be a while. But He'll pay it forward with the cab again. <laughs> pay it forward. Keep that, keep it going. So this is a really nice tractor. You've done a couple different things to it. You want to show us what you've done differently as far as the snowblower chute goes? Yeah, so we've got the, the BX2816 um, with front um, chute rotation um, for uh, rotating left and right, as well as a hydraulic up and down um, tied in with a, a Bosch Rexroth uh, hydraulic diverter there. So you, so you have a, a Bosch? Uh, diverter there that you've put on yourself and you got all the cords nicely yeah neat cords are nicely way. in there um, with all of that um, little quick weather connector there um, to be able to disconnect that quickly um, okay. and then connects in normal um, straight to the just plums in just like center. anybody else's snowblower there's no reason for you to ever be in the cold elements never you go from the heated house to the heated garage to the heated tractor outside in your heated cab Back Until inside. the job is done, <laughs> there's no reason. You don't have to turn your chute. You don't have to adjust your deflector. There's, don't do anything. You don't have to do anything. But it's the reason we order another fun. garage door opener for the entire <laughs> <laughs> Garage door opener for the tractor. Awesome. Well, thanks for showing us around your tractor. And that was uh, a fun trip. So he was very generous and yeah. donated that cab to Andy. And we are all happy. Now we've got an oil, oil change. And you already changed those pain in the butt fuel filters underneath. Yeah, those are already done, yes. Good job. I'm glad I didn't have to do that. <laughs> I hate those yeah. fuel filters. Come on, Kubota, figure out a better solution. Agreed. Okay, guys, just in case you don't know what I'm talking about, this stupid fuel filter location. There it is. We are straight directly right underneath the tractor. It's right in front of that HST fan, which, by the way, Andy, your HST fan is not broken. Oh, good. <laughs> so good job <laughs> not broken but you changed that filter already did you take this little uh this little guard plate off to do that or are you able to get it without taking that off no nope, had to take it off you did take it off okay that yeah. that's a pain in the butt to get off too isn't it it is yeah this little guard is what i'm talking about this little thing it's a lot easier to change this fuel filter without this guard in the way but even getting that off is hard to do because those bolts are all close and it's just, it's a pain in the butt. There's your fuel pump right there. And then the fuel line continues up towards the engine. And we'll turn around. And here's the other fuel filter right there. So two fuel filters on the BX. This one is really nice and easy to change, but it hardly ever gets dirty because there's already a filter in front of the fuel pump that collects most of the stuff. But Andy, I brought you a present, didn't I? You did. I did. You're so excited about that. Let's let's install that right now. Show the show the people on the YouTube how easy that is to install. <laughs> this I <is> can uh, handle. <laughs> in case you get thirsty, you can have fresh brewed coffee with uh, your tractor. So. We've got the tapered um, cold brew coffee filter. It's supposed to go into a mason jar to make coffee, but guess what? I bet it fits in that fuel tank just perfectly. Oh my goodness. It's, like it's just like it was made for it, right? Really, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Merry Christmas. Yeah, hey, thanks. <laughs> hey, no problem. <laughs> so, there you have it, guys. I don't know. You got anything? Get any words of wisdom for the people on YouTube? You know, <laughs> don't get defeated. Don't be defeated. Don't get defeated. Keep trying. Keep trying. <laughs> Electrical tape. Yeah, that, that's that, worked. That worked. Yeah, and you got to wrap it counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. Yeah, I don't know if that makes a difference, but we figured it might. Yeah. So, yeah, there we go. Just another tip from a Ritter Bit Will Do from Andy over here. All right, we'll get you on some more videos. I get to come over here this spring and play in the woods, don't I? Absolutely. Nice. Yes. yes. It's good to have good friends with with trees in their yard. <laughs> Don't drop the filter, okay? <laughs> what, what we're doing, we're priming the oil filter. Yeah, we're just putting a little bit of oil into the filter. 
Look at that nice mess I made because I was watching the camera instead of... There we go. I'll just kind of move that around. This is a tip that I learned from... I went to the school of Paul Short Tractor Maintenance School. I don't know if you guys have ever watched Paul Short, but if you're ever looking for good tractor maintenance tips, he's got a lot of great videos on there. Paul Short up in... Uh, not, not Nova Scotia, up on... Um, near St. John's. You're inspecting filter wrenches, is that what you're doing? Checking to make sure that... <laughs> I was. <laughs> All right, well, look what else I brought you. The uh, spray-on wax, okay? So all you gotta do, spray it. Just, just cake your snow blower here with it, and it will do a much better job of non-sticking than any vegetable oil or WD-40 or silicone spray. It's it's the best way to go. It's perfect. We'll spray on wax. So All right. I think tomorrow we're supposed to get some sticky snow. Yes, we are. I can't wait. I can't yeah, wait. Yeah. I'm hoping for an extra day of vacation. <laughs> I bet you are. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not ready to go back to school. All right, you guys, that, that's all for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. So until next time, keep on tractoring and God bless.